everyone today we're in a Land Cruiser Prado and basically it's just coming for handbrake adjustment just need to adjust this show you what I mean listen to the amount of clicks it's way too high and it only really starts gripping when it's up here so we need to adjust this so the first adjustment you can attend to is the handbrake adjustment there so there's a couple of lock nuts here so a 10 mm deep socket or a spanner will do this but as you can see this one is fully maxed out so what we'll have to do is release this and go to the back take the wheels off and adjust the drum brake assembly because this has got a disc and a drum brake for the park brake system when we go to the back I'll show you what I mean it's got a rotor and a drum brake assembly for the park brake system. Always make sure to chalk your wheels. Whenever you're doing any handbrake work, make sure you do that. It's always a good safety precaution to bear in mind. And when you're jacking up on the back, you can jack it on the diff there. I like to use a piece of wood and use a couple of jack stands on the solid diff there and there. Okay, now we'll proceed to taking off the wheel. Okay, so now that we have chopped our wheels, jacked up the rear, we can now release the handbrake safely. And now we will release the tension of that handbrake cable there. I'll just take off the top lock nut so you can get an idea. And get a clearer picture on what exactly is happening here. You don't have to do that. Okay, so about that, you can feel this. I can turn this by hand. So we'll keep it about there. Notice how it's loose here now, I can just shake it and pull it up. So we'll leave it about that and now we'll go to the back, take the wheels off and perform the adjustment there. This is a good point when you take your wheel off as well, just to inspect your brake pads from here. If you look closely through there, can you see that notch? The little slip there, that's the indication of the brake pad material. Hopefully you can see that. This other side's fine. And if you look on this side, this side is also fine. But I think you will struggle to see this on camera. So both these are fine. So what we need to adjust is here to that hole here. just in there at the bottom you need a good torch but through here when you're lined up here about the center that's when you'll see the adjuster I'll put up a picture now of what the adjuster should look like so that's what you need to adjust so that's what you'll be adjusting that's the adjuster if you if all you're doing is just adjusting the drums but I'd like to inspect what the shoe condition is like on the inside so I'll be taking off the caliper which is held in by those two bolts there and there at the bottom. We're taking both those two bolts off and inspecting 
the brake assembly over here and on the other side. Don't think you could see that on the time lapse, but this disc is basically stuck on to the actual wheel bearing housing. So, in order to extract it, you just need a couple of standard 12mm head bolts, which would be roughly about the 8mm diameter here. And you just use two bolts here and here, and you can extract it that way. It makes life a lot easier. So that's what the full system looks like. You can use warm water, give everything a good clean here and blow it out with a good amount of air. This is the adjuster at the bottom here. So this is what we were adjusting before. So as you can see, good explanation, when I push it this way, it's contracting and becoming smaller when I go up. So when I pull it, push it up this way, so I turn the adjuster up with the screwdriver, pushing up this way, it's expanding it. So then the shoe will grip onto the actual housing of the rotor. That's what it looks like. So before putting the disc back, I like to use some 60 or 80 grit sandpaper and just roughen up the inner drum surface, especially if you're reusing your old rotor. <laughs> Go around, give the whole thing a good clean, and then clean up all the dust with some hot water or brake cleaner and make sure it's dry and then install it again. So before installing the rotor back on here, I always like to use some anti-seize. This makes life a lot easier if you're removing the rotor again. So I'll show you what we were doing earlier. Now that the rotor is off, you can see it a bit clearer. That's the adjuster there. So hopefully you can see that by going down on this side, so going down it expands it, going up shrinks it.
So what you're going to do is keep it just in until you feel a bit of drag. So that's spinning freely, but so that's spinning freely, but it's still got a bit of drag. So I do that on both sides with the adjustment over here that I showed you, and then you can go ahead and reinstall your caliper if you removed it and cleaned everything like I did. If not, you can just go ahead and put your wheel back if you've just reached your desired um, handbrake tension. But um, we'll go inside and readjust the cable that we loosened as well, so that has to be adjusted. Okay, so after adjusting both sides, we've not adjusted this yet, but we'll just feel. Yeah, and that's still way too high. You, realistically, you want about seven clicks, seven to eight. That's still too high. So that still needs a bit of adjustment. So we'll come back to the discs on either side and adjust both sides, as I showed you earlier. One side's up, one side's down to tighten the shoes and expand them so that they touch the actual drum housing when the handbrake is activated. Once you've got the ideal drag on both sides, we'll go inside and tighten up that handbrake cable. But just to give you a rough idea, if you're using one hand, you should be able to rotate it, and with, so it'll be quite difficult. Well, with two hands. That's the sort of tension you want on both sides. Okay, so we're back inside. Notice now the clips. Notice the clips now. Um, so what we'll do is we'll drop it down, and now we'll begin our adjustment here. So now we'll have all the adjustment on this. Don't need to adjust it too much, but it, you'd rather have adjusted the back and have this slack. So then you have freedom to adjust it later on as and when it's needed. So just finger tight. About there. We're just trying to take off the slack like I showed you earlier. So notice now there's no slack there. Still a little bit high, but we'll leave that for the moment. We'll put the wheels back on the car and we'll just test it that way before tightening this any further.
if you want to top the wheels down to 130 newton meters. Now that we're done, within a few clicks, so we'll count it, one, two, three, four, within about four clicks, it's gripping well. So we can go ahead and readjust this if needed, or if you're happy with the tension you've got. You can go ahead and reinstall your lock nut. And that's how you adjust your handbrake on this type of a system. I hope this video has some, some helped you. Of course, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, man. See ya.